Well, let's do the introductions. I'm Greg Aleveris with Arcabus out of Boston, and I'm here to discuss asset management. And joining me is Rob Foray. So, Rob, let's go ahead and get started. It's a short agenda for today. Uh, we did the foundations, but we will be going over Arcabus Cloud Overview. I'll present a little overview of what the cloud offers. We will focus in on the Arcabus managed asset management portion today. Then after the, after the overview, I'll hand it over to Greg for the asset, actual Arcabus Asset Cloud, cloud version of Arcabus Asset Management. Then we'll, at the end, we'll have a, a little answer the questions that pop up on the question board. A little overview about Arcabus Cloud. Um, if those of, for those who have attended the foundations part, this will be an addition to the foundation. So as if you recall, Archibus is all one singular database. So all these additions and add-ons is, is based on a core foundation that is shared across all the uh, space assets, et cetera. Today we will uh, start starting with foundations, which gave you the basic space and services uh, type uh, capabilities within Archibus. And today, we're going to start the integrated modules. There is space, obviously space, enhanced space management, assets, which we'll be focusing on today, uh, maintenance, um, which is on-demand and operations and, uh, and preventive, uh, reservations, room reservations, and then at the end, the CeraView integration, which for those who don't know, there is a, a merger between Archibus and CeraView, and we will talk about the CeraView later uh, in probably early next year during that presentation. So regarding about asset management, uh, the, uh, the asset management in the cloud version uh, allows for asset inventory, managing the asset lifecycle, the equipment systems, upstream downstream equipment systems that are part of the, potentially part of the asset, and asset disposal, uh, basic asset lifecycle um, that uh, many of you are familiar with. So uh, the Archibus Cloud Asset uh, Management, uh, realizing your ROI for asset management, the functionality starts with the inception or procurement of the assets, the intake. You'll be able to do that then going into the imaging and staging and, de and uh, the uh, staging of your assets, the deployment of your assets, uh, then the ongoing monitoring and maintenance of assets, which is very important to the lifecycle management. Um, tied to that could be the contract and vendor support. Uh, a lot of these assets, especially the big ticket items, usually come with warranties. And a lot of organizations may forget that and, and not realize that and could have some cost savings when, a product, when one of your assets goes down. Call the vendor because it's under warranty instead so of trying to remedy the issue yourself. And then finally, the retiring and disposal of the asset at the end of its life cycle. So assets are part of the capital planning process, uh, certainly the big ticket item assets. Um, as I mentioned earlier, warranties, about 40% industry-wide of assets are under warranty. Um, and a lot of organizations don't know that, or personnel within those organizations don't realize that. And this will help you maintain that to see what, what assets are under warranty so that you get proper uh, service on them. Uh, <clears throat> enhanced capital budgeting on, uh, obviously, again, big ticket items to meet long-term uh, company goals uh, so that you can uh, plan ahead for big ticket purchases as you uh, de-life an asset, a big ticket uh, item. And, and for some organizations, there's regulatory requirements and compliance. Uh, for assets, healthcare, um, and, and other governmental, fire safety, et cetera. So uh, those are very important in the asset management uh, uh, of your portfolio. So I'll step in and talk about the Archibus asset management. And as, as Rob said, you know, this is all built on the, the Archibus Enterprise platform, but we focused on some key capabilities that we want to deliver in the cloud and you know for those that manage assets it's important to make sure you capture all the right details about those assets and and Archibus gives you the benefit of not only defining the asset but making sure you align it to its location within the facility understanding its relationship to the organization you know tracking the associated cost and knowing you know some of the key documentation about that asset and that's that's an important aspect of what you know, you get started with them when developing that inventory. 
in reality, Arcabus, you know, the asset management is really a comprehensive view of all your physical assets, starting with the buildings, the properties that they reside on, the more traditional equipment, you know, boilers, chillers, pumps, motors, assembly equipment, office equipment, PCs, etc. And of course, furniture, desk, tables, chairs, cabinets, bookcases, etc. So it's a pretty broad spectrum of uh, requirements and Arcabus helps kind of collect all of that information in one place and you get to decide which of those elements that you want to track. Because Archibus is not just managing the inventory, but also managing a lot of the processes and making sure we're you know, aware of what's going on, we can always take a look at any given asset and understand what's going on uh, within, you know, whether we're doing maintenance or we, whether we're you know, providing uh, projects around uh, specific buildings or specific assets or we're doing a variety of assessments. Archibus collects all of that information to give us a holistic picture of what's going on. And, you know, for us, we want to know, uh, obviously, what is the condition of the assets? Ideally, everything should be new. But that's not always going to be the case. In reality, there are going to be various stages of an asset from mostly good to fair to ultimately poor and in some cases bad where things are in pretty much getting to failure mode. Uh, complemented with that, of course, is what is the status of those assets? Which ones are currently in use? Where, where are they in storage or where are they even out of service? And so if we have a series of assets that are out of service and their condition is poor, these would be good indicators for us to start evaluating what assets we sh you know, should look at for either disposal refurbishment, selling, donating, whatever the case may be, so that they don't uh, you know, take up our resources and we make sure that we're operating at peak efficiency. That means that Archibus can take you through that step of actually reviewing the life cycle of the asset and making those kinds of determinations of when it's time to evaluate the status of an asset and when is it time to actually dispose of that asset and again donating it or just throwing it out in the trash or whatever. One other aspect of assets is the nature of systems. You know, assets are all tracked by themselves. Oftentimes they're part of a bigger system. And what we can do is make those kinds of associations within Archibus to help us understand the impact of what one asset has on a bigger system. For those are facilities managers, obviously, when we're dealing with building systems like electrical mechanical, we know that if a certain part fails that there's some upstream and downstream ramifications, but that can extend into just the kinds of operations that we do uh, within our facilities, the kind of work that we perform. So we can pretty much track any kind of system within the uh, product. Now, what we're gonna do is kind of walk through what can we get from Archibus Asset Management? And I've prepared some videos to help us kind of get familiar with it. One of the things that we've introduced with Archibus Cloud is the ability to engage with the employee population and make sure that they have direct access, access to some of the key information and requirements. And if they want to know where certain assets are, they can search through the inventory find a specific asset and locate where it is and get the details of what it is. So let's say I wanted to do something and I need it. Now, in this case, when we go to the, the space, we find that the asset in question has some problems. So we can actually connect it to our maintenance system and, and you know issue a ticket to get repaired. We find that it's cracked. We know that it's located in the SRL building. It's up on the third floor and we're gonna find that piece of equipment based on the fact that it's a microscope and we're gonna go find the unit that we said. Now, I did this the long way because I didn't scan the QR code for this demonstration. Uh, but the nice thing is, is that we can scan those codes and actually proceed with the uh, uh, capturing those details. But I, I showed you how to get to it uh, through just searching through data. So here we create a ticket. Now that we've created a ticket, as an employee, we you know we know all the things that we do. We even can see the status of 
the tickets. And ultimately what we wanna do is make sure that we're following along to see when that work is completed because we might be interested in using, in this case, that particular asset or room location. So this just helps us understand that the information that we are responsible for managing is available to a broader audience that we're working with. Now, let's get into the actual inventory of the assets themselves. And so what we're gonna do is take a deep dive into the inventory and get to understand it a little bit better. As I mentioned, you know, we track buildings, properties, assets. So what we're gonna do is focus on the assets for a given building. We're gonna specifically look at equipment assets. And like we did before, when we were searching for microscope from an employee point of view, we're gonna see how many of those we have throughout the facility. So we're gonna run a report and we can see in the SRL building at the end of the day, we have 39 microscopes with a total value of 101, 400. The details that we get are very important. We, we need to capture a lot of information. So like I said, we need to know what the identification code is where do we get the asset from? Where is it within our facilities? When did we get it? And more importantly, as we look at all the things that we can do with Archibus, we can pin it to a specific location. So here we actually can go right down to a room and identify the asset. And as I start viewing the, the life cycle status of the asset, I wanna review the history. And so remember a few minutes ago, we created a ticket for one of our assets. Let's see how that's captured within Archibus. So as we look at our laboratory equipment, cause remember we were looking at a microscope. And so we see all the different uh, types of lab equipment. And again, I can filter specifically to microscope. And I can find that asset that we did a moment ago. And if you remember, what we did was we generated a ticket. And if you'll notice the status of that ticket is, is requested. So this shows you in real time, what is actually going on with any given asset. So we are fully connected in Archibus to everything that's happening with that asset. And as the work is completed, we manage it through its cycle so that eventually it goes from closed to eventually historical. And on top of that, we track transactions, which would be like anytime we move the asset from one location to another, we record the history of, of where it was and where it is and the date and time that it happened within the system. So these are all things that we need to know in terms of tracking and managing that full catalog of assets that we have. Remember that, you know, we are managing a pretty extensive inventory. So now going back again to my lab equipment. So I'm looking at things that are classified. And for those that don't know, we're using what we call the Construction Standards Institute classification process. And we're grouping everything under laboratory equipment. And what we're seeing is that we have a total portfolio of 53 assets. We recently purchased the majority of them uh, with a couple of items that are a little bit older and in fair condition. And it so happens that all 53 of those assets are currently in use. And if we break it down a little bit, we can see 48 of them belong to the operations research group. And we have a full catalog of all the assets that make up those 48 units. And within those 48 units are those microscopes that we looked at a little while ago. So now that we've done that, what we're gonna do is start you know, managing a little bit more the asset. So there's a lot of data that we have to keep track of when it uh, relates to assets. So again, we're gonna drill down into our building, looking at, again, equipment, that list of microscopes that we were talking about. So 
What I was trying to get to was a list of reports that we have. And one of the key things that we do is identify where there are gaps in the data that we have with our assets. And, and I'm going to, in a few minutes, I'm going to explain why that's important. Specifically, we're going to look at for those assets that are missing some key dates around purchase and installation. So we'll run the report. We'll see those assets that are missing that information. So there's a variety from personal computers to air handlers to a variety of other things. When we take a closer look at any given asset, remember that we have a lot of details about those assets and including a lot of date de details. And for some assets like this one, we can see that we're missing the purchase and the installation date of the asset. And we'll find as we get towards the end of this particular section, why that can be critical to helping us manage the life cycle of the assets. So for now, we can see that Archibus will help us locate and find where a lot of the missing data is in our system to make sure that we fill it out and, and uh, report on information that might be missing. We have full access to the inventory and catalog of what we do. So here we are gonna take a look at the inventory as it relates to specific buildings and floors. So we're gonna scan our portfolio of buildings. We're gonna go back to the building that we've looked at a few times. We're gonna specifically look at the third floor and get a complete picture of all the assets that are currently listed on the third floor. And what's nice is we can actually use the software to export that data uh, and maybe hand it off to somebody to run off and do a quick inspection to verify that it's all there before we start planning a move project and relocating those assets from that floor to a different location, whether it's a different floor or a different building in our portfolio. Now, on top of having inventory reports, we also can look at a variety of analysis, including the maintenance history of assets. And so if I go to the maintenance history of a specific asset, there are some important pieces of information, like what is the life expectancy of the asset? How old is the asset? How much remaining life we have? And the reason that that's relevant is because we know these details, we know the install date, we know the in-service date, we know the purchase date for this particular asset. And now if you think back to a couple of moments ago when I was looking for missing data, we had a bunch of assets that were missing some of these key dates, in which case the software couldn't calculate the proper age and you know remaining life of the asset in question. So for us to do our analysis, it would be very difficult to do to find. Now, on top of knowing this kind of information and helping us truly understand the asset, we also, of course, have a full comprehensive list of any and all maintenance that is performed on the asset. And if we're good custodians of the assets, the only things that we should be doing are related to the preventive maintenance and costs that we planned and scheduled for the asset. Because if we run into situations where we're doing a lot of corrective actions. That means we're either not doing our preventive maintenance or we have equipment that is aged to a point where it's now going into a series of failures. And the more time that passes, the more failures that occur, the higher the cost, and then the impact on the facilities becomes more, you know, more severe in some cases. So this is why we can help you with all that information. Now, the last thing I wanna get to is the disposition of the assets in question. So as we've gone through this optimization, we've identified a number of assets that are in certain condition, and now we wanna take the next steps. In this case, we want to identify that the asset is ready for disposal. So we've identified this gas chromatograph to, to do that. Now what we're going to do is use this information to physically update our inventory. And to help us do that, we're going to filter to the specific gas in question. And we're going to actually use the system to update inventory. So here we can use it to discard, donate, listed as stolen, lost, you know, whatever criteria we have so that we know what happened to that asset 
in time. And this is a step that often gets missed in most locations. So when you do an inventory report, you find that this is still an inventory, even though you can't find it anywhere on the premises that you're looking. And that makes it for a lot of work and energy for people to uh, manage their facilities and the assets in question. So part of our step is to make sure that we notify our enterprise systems that the assets are no longer in use and have been properly disposed of. The final thing I want to talk about is just to give you a picture of the systems in question. So again, you can define all sorts of systems. We'll do a more traditional building system. You know, we'll take a look at uh, air handling unit that, in, you know, that includes pumps and chillers and cooling towers that are all kind of part of one system. <clears throat> and they're all related to each other. Uh, in particular, we're going to go look at the chiller and all of the relevant information. And we haven't stressed this before, but we are fully integrated for 3D model view. And so we can actually locate that asset in the full building model with all of the parameters that come with the asset. So one of the things that Archibus has done is make sure that in addition to capturing key asset data that gets put in the Archibus database, we've also captured a lot of supplemental data from all of the parameters that were used to design and develop the asset in question. So for your maintenance teams that may need to do some system checks and you're not really going to store them in Archibus, you still have access because those parameters are there as part of the overall deliverable of the system in question. So that concludes our um, presentation, giving you a fair idea of what Archibus is capable of. So Rob, I'm going to throw it back to you so you can talk about what's going to happen next. Just a reminder, save the dates. We have some upcoming uh, webinars. Uh, after the Thanksgiving holiday, before Christmas break, um, part three will be maximizing real estate space planning with Archibus Cloud. Then after the new year, middle of January, we will have optimized preventive maintenance, building operations with Archibus Cloud. In February, it will be improved the work environment reservations uh, module in Archibus Cloud. Then finally in March, beginning of March, we will showcase the Seraview space planning and optimization tool that is, uh, that is available and integrated with Archibus. And that's all great, Rob, because guess what? We're going to be in Chicago in April for the next Nexus conference, and a lot of the folks will have a good chance to get a flavor of Archibus Cloud and, you know, come out to Chicago, get to speak with people that are doing it or get to learn more about it.